I'll give you these pastors. There were people in Jeremiah's day coming to the people and saying, uh, the, the king of Babylon, is, they're not going to come, and they're not going to take you captive. Jeremiah delivered his word and said, the king of Babylon is going to come and take you captive. Just the opposite. And, so, and the Lord told them through Jeremiah, I'll give you pastors. They'll feed you with knowledge and with understanding. Well, I believe that the Lord Jesus, the great prophet, he fulfilled, he fulfilled that prophecy, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Now, the Holy Scriptures are the staple dish on Jesus' table. Amen. Now, there are, there are other side dishes, but they all have Scripture in them. They all have truth in them. Amen. There are other side dishes, like, here's a big one, fellowship. Amen. Fellowship with kindred brethren. Like David said, they'll, they that hope in thee, they'll be glad when they see me. <laughs> well, David wasn't, both, he wasn't being prideful. It was good for them that they saw me. That's not what David was saying. David was commenting on fellowship. They that hope in God, they'll be glad when they see me because I hope in God. That's what he's saying. Fellowship with brethren is like a side dish on the table. What would fellowship be without Scripture? It wouldn't exist. See, the, sta the staple dish on Jesus' table is fellowship. Here's another, another side dish is preaching. Maybe I shouldn't say side dish. Another dish on his table is preaching. Take the scripture out of preaching. What is preaching? Philosophy? What, what is it? What could it be to take truth out of preaching? See, the scriptures, are the, they're the staple dish. Here, another, another dish at the table is meditation in your closet. You, you set your mind to think, to meditate, to understand. That's a, that's a dish at the table. You're nourished by meditation. You're nourished by fellowship. You're nourished by preaching. What about prayer? Your prayer closet is nourishing. What would your prayer be if you had no knowledge of the scriptures? Well, you wouldn't pray to begin with. You wouldn't know about a prayer closet. See, Jesus, he nourished. It, it, I said all these things because I thought it was too simple to just say Jesus, Jesus nourishes you with the Bible. Now, next point. <laughs> well, in one sense, we all know that. But in another sense, we don't all know that. Jesus nourishes with the scripture with the truth as newborn babes therefore peter said desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby see the sin, the milk of the word is just what it says just the words of the scripture some people think of revelation that's the meat of the word romans that's that's the meat of the word no the milk of the word is just what it says the meat of the word that's the understanding and jesus opening it up to you showing you more teaching you by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, the, this really is an acquired taste. Desire, the sincere milk of the word. It's an acquired taste that the Lord himself has to give to you. The Lord told Ezekiel in his letter, chapter 3, verse 3, said unto the Son of Man, Son of Man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with the roll that I give thee. Yeah. See, it's more than just the mind. The scripture doesn't, the scripture's not, just pointed directly at your mind. Your mind is involved, but it's pointed at your bowels, your inner parts. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. That's what Ezekiel said. The scriptures are not just a text textbook. You have to fill, it fills your bowels, not just your mind. It's not just a textbook. The words of the page, Jesus says in the parable, the seed is the word of God. Well, what does seed do? It grows. That's what we expect from it. The Lord told John the same thing in Revelation. He says, um, the angel told John, go, go ask that angel for the book. And so he went and asked. He says, give me the little book. And the angel says, says take it and eat it up. And it'll, be in thy, it'll make thy belly bitter, but it will be in thy mouth sweet as honey. That's the experience of the word of God, ingesting the truth. It tastes good with the taste that the Lord gives you. There, there's some bitter implications, but the implications, they, they won't outlast the sweetness. The sweetness is going to outlast the bitter. The bitter is going to pass away with the body and with this world, but the sweetness, it'll endure. Matthew 4, chapter 4, <clears throat> Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. What is that except Jesus nourishing the church? Nourish the church with the truth. Now, when Jesus says he'll live by the word of God, he didn't mean live by it like live by a rule. 
There, it, it, it seems fashionable today for people to talk about the Bible as being a rule book. God's rule book, God's, that's just too low of a view. There are rules in it, things you better do and things you better not do. But that's just too low of a view. The Word of God is living and active and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's able to cut to the dividing the soul and spirit and the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And when, Jer when Jeremiah said, Thy words were found and I did eat them, they were the joy and rejoicing of my heart. See, the Lord hasn't made the Word to be like bitter herbs. The new man has a palate that's accustomed to the truth. He likes Scripture. The new man really does enjoy the truth. Remember Brother Tim at one of the renewals, picturing what these renewals must look like to them that are on the outside. The, them that are on the out, they're looking in, it's like, they really enjoy that. They really like going to church. Well, the new man does. He really does enjoy it. Now, I want to conclude with some thoughts about what are the effects of being nourished by Jesus. This is what he's doing now. What are the effects? How can I tell that I'm being nourished by Jesus? This is an important question. It's important because we are required by the Lord. It's critical to examine ourselves to see whether we be in the faith. So it's pretty critical if Jesus is nourishing the church, I need to somehow be able to take inventory of myself to know whether or not I'm being nourished. Because if I'm not, then I own the problem. He doesn't. So here, here's, here's some effects, some effects of being nourished by Jesus. And I'll just conclude with these things. If I'm being nourished by Jesus, then my new man has an advantage over the old man. My new man can call the shots, can say no. If I'm being nourished, then my spirit will have one up on my body. And I can keep under my body and make it my slave. See, that's an effect of Jesus nourishing you. Your body doesn't control you. You control your body. That's what sanctification is. Paul writing to the Thessalonians that this is the will of God in Christ Jesus, even your sanctification. And then the, the example of that is that you know how to possess your vessel in sanctification and honor. Here's another example. If I'm being nourished by Jesus, then the things which are above will capture and hold my affection, and the things of the world will be offensive. That's how I can know. I'm being nourished by Jesus. If I'm being nourished by him, then I will be, I'll be sensitive to God's favor. When his favor's on me, I'll also be sensitive when he's not pleased with me. Amen. If I'm being nourished, nourished by Jesus, then I will enjoy the presence and fellowship of kindred brethren, which makes me a stranger and a sojourner to them that are without. If you, see, this is, you, you, brethren, be alarmed when you don't enjoy fellowship. Amen. Be alarmed. If I'm being nourished by Jesus, then I will, I'll be able to say like Paul, really say it, and th this expression will be mine, not just, not just being a parrot and saying what Paul said, but this expression is mine. When I'm nourished by Jesus, I'll, I'll be able to say, to depart and to be with Christ is far better. I can only say that when I'm nourished. Amen. Only when I'm nourished. So I'll leave you with this exhortation, brethren. May we all have hearty appetites and occupy regular places at his table to be nourished by Jesus.